are sadly on the last leg of our journey we are just coming down to Brentford where we're booked on the three o'clock lock or around that time to go up the tidal Thames to Teddington and all around us the trees are dropping leaves although I suspect that's from this summer's stress as much as an autumnal thing all the oaks are dropping their acorns in the canal so you keep thinking that fish are jumping but it's acorns plopping in and we've got another mile or so to go and uh, and then that's it we'll moor up tonight um, at Teddington or just past Teddington and then we'll take a couple of slow days before we get down to the way in Arran so at the moment this is what Brentford looks like there's a massive program of apartment building going on with all the usual big glossy photos showing the dream life you can have but in the meantime there's not much of a high street and Morrison's was the only supermarket we could find but I expect that'll improve once all the hundreds of new apartments are done these are the moorings which are better quite nice really Well, we've been moored in Brentford for a couple of hours and we're just getting ready to go through the locks. Henry's gone down to make sure we can't find a lock keeper at the moment, but I'm sure they'll turn up soon. Meanwhile, we met a lovely lady called Rachel on the black boat behind us earlier. And she was telling us about the problems with the facilities down here. So over there are the boaters' facilities. And unfortunately, a few days ago, somebody a boater tried to put the contents of their compost toilet down the l -San and blocked it and then the same night somebody came along and ripped all the taps and all the metal pipework out of the showers flooding it out so it's all closed down now i don't think crt can get on top of things like that it's just a nightmare really meanwhile we've got our life jackets ready our walkie talkies our anchor we're full of diesel and we've got plenty of water so whenever the lock keeper turns up we're good to go so there we go we've just come through the gauging lock and the Thames lock and there's the Thames ahead of us the lock keepers just told us to be safe <laughs> we will so we have to come out of here and we have to do a sharp right hand bend it's not a right angle it's a sort of um what was it a 90 degree angle would you call um, that it's more than that more than that it but it's very sharp we came when we came down here in the spring we missed it and um nearly floated off down the thames anyway you'll see what i mean in a moment so here we go round to the right we're going with the tide so this should be quite an easy turn we're not getting pushed back down the river opposite is Kew Gardens and we're hoping to get up to Teddington in about an hour oh well it's just started raining <laughs> This is the notice to tell you, so you can see how we missed that on the way. Well, they have cut it back a bit, but you still can't see it. It's tiny, and when you're coming down the river, it's invisible. And there we go, onto the Thames. There are lots of rowers, so we've got to keep an eye out for them. And now we're going to crank it. You can get a better idea of the speed from the side of the boat. It doesn't feel that fast from the back. But here you can see we're going at full crank, whatever that is. There's a lot of debris in the water. And of course a load of plastic going straight out to the sea. But it's always rather wonderful to be on the Thames. 
and it's definitely easier than the Trent because you don't need a chart to follow. There's no sand banks in the middle that you have to watch out for. You just have to crank it and get to the lock on time. And if you don't turn up on time, they ring you to find out where you are. The Mad Max boat we saw on the way up is still over there. This is Eel Pie Isle. Must be fun living on there. Over to our left, it's all nature reserve. Over there is Strawberry Hill. One of these has been in use recently. We got notified about it. They were putting a fire out and pulling the water out of the Thames. One hopes never to have to call them. And although we're running up with the tide, you can see from the line of silt on the bushes over there, how low the Thames actually is at the moment. And before you know it, Teddington Lock. And that took 45 minutes, not bad. Just gotta make sure we go on the right side now. It's slightly confusing. Well, we're through Teddington Lock and we're moored up opposite the weir, which is not too noisy, which is good. We've got stung for a license. We're only on the Thames for one or two days, but um, we've got to go and buy a license. They don't do the transit ones anymore, so we've got to pay for a one day one or a week, depending on how long we're going to be on it. So I think we'll say we're going to be on it for a day and we're going to see how much it is to moor here because it's this isn't free either go and find out whoa to the rescue r and li that'll be on saving lives at sea i expect oh that made the boat rock wow That is very nice, very colonial. Imagine having that as a house. Garden up on the top. Bedroom in that little bit jutting out over the water. Look at the chimneys on that. Imagine having that many fires going. How much wood you'd go through. <laughs> A nice quiet night at um, Teddington Lock and we've come down to Sunbury and this is a sort of hidden mooring spot because it's sneakily behind the lock which is over there and we couldn't find it when we came down earlier in the year but we knew it was here because I had to deliver some sculpture to a gallery just over there last year so we investigated and came down a little bit and found it and it's 24 hours and it's really nice. Sunbury is very nice, you know, quite posh, nice little galleries and pubs and things, cafes and plenty of room to do a, a, a UE here so you can go back out to the lock. Really nice, so glad we found it. Piles 
Alright. Maybe not. And that's how they keep themselves stable the most things there. Push it down onto the riverbed. Mm. Well here we are. It's our last day on the Thames and we'll be coming onto the way in Arran this afternoon. And our trip is nearly over for this season. You can tell we're back in the south. We've just gone past Shepperton Marina where the diesel is 175, which is the most we've paid all summer. It's, it's gonna be sad coming off the Thames. We've been on rivers nearly all of this year, uh, just as well, because the canals have been really um, empty. And um, I love coming down the Thames. I, it makes me think of Samuel Pepys and Thomas Cromwell and Dickens and all those people who the Thames was part of their daily life and they traversed it like, it, like a roadway. And I think about Dickens' characters out in their rowboats, fishing bodies out of the Thames and things like that. Thank God we don't have to do that now. So, yep. Fantastic season. There won't be so many videos now. I'll do a few over the winter. We'll be doing maintenance on the boat and going for little trips up the way in Aran. And we've got some exciting plans, exciting for us, plans for next year. But for now, we're just coming down through Walton on Thames. We're going to go around the back of Desborough Island because there is some mooring around there and we haven't been around there so I'll do, we'll go around there, I'll show you what it's like around there and then off the Thames and that's it. <laughs> okay then. So down there is the normal route that we'd go but in front of us is Desborough Island and we're just going to skirt around the back of it and see what's there. It's a really peaceful backwater here. Look at that place. Amazing boathouse. That's the island over there. There's a um, a water works on there and some playing fields and that's about it. A bridge at either end. <laughs> Is he scary? Well there was lots of nice mooring around the back of the island. And we're coming down the other side of it now. It is a nice little backwater, nice place to spend a day or two. A couple of pubs back there too. And then we reach the end of the Desborough Channel. That's Doily Cart Island there. A tiny little island, but it looks like it's got quite a community living around it. God, that's an amazing building, Henry, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, one well, of those like an American colonial job. Yeah. Straight round to the left, and the way in Aaron should hove into view any moment. Do you remember when we came down here last year, Henry? We couldn't see which way to go. <laughs> yeah, it may be the same again. Well, that's it off the Thames, back on the way in Aaron, and we're moored up uh, towards the top of it. We're going to spend next week getting down to the bottom where we're more up for the winter. And since we were here last, they've had a bit of an issue behind us. The electricity substation, which was over there, blew up an electrical fault. And this whole line of trees here and the whole field there caught fire. And so all the trees had to be cut down, they're all blackened and the fire came raging up over the fence and the fire brigade couldn't get over there they were around here on the other side of the canal so one of the boats had to take some of the firemen across and they had to shoot their water through holes in the hedge to put it out the grass is all back now green as anything 
didn't take long but sadly the line of trees is lost so that's it for now I'll see you on the next video I don't know when that will be in a month or so and um, thanks for watching do subscribe anyway because there will be some more and I'll see you on the next one bye for now